back. Did a bit of reading. the church decided to respond by sending a team of four lawyers plus Tommy and his wife Jessica Teshrock to the New Yorker. And uh, so we had a meeting that lasted the entire day. And uh, in these 47 volumes were responses to the book and letter. But moreover, you know, what I regarded them in as when I looked at these binders all lined up, seven linear feet, uh, these, this was a book. It was just laying out. I mean, some, in fact, Remnick, David Remnick, the editor of the New Yorker, during a bathroom break, he called me aside and said, "You know what you got here, you fuck? You got a book." And so I was what very, very grateful. It was an intense day, but it was a productive. Day. And actually, it was a more productive day with the Church of Scientology. Broken watch for finger. Well, I actually did find him. Uh, he's living in Texas. He's selling real estate. And he told me that his views, he didn't want to talk to me. He said his views hadn't changed at all. And, uh, and uh, I tried to ask him another question. He said, I don't have to answer your questions anymore. Now, let me just ask you, you know, in the day, uh, journalists who wrote about Scientology back in the day were, what was the, the biggest cautionary tale is Paulette Cooper, whose life was absolutely upended. She was sued, I think, 19 yeah. times and framed and indicted and terrible, terrible, terrible. That was a long time ago, and the church has disavowed some of these tactics, but they certainly, they haven't sued anybody in quite a number of years either. They used to sue media outlets and other adversaries, the perceived adversaries routinely. But what about now? I mean, there's certainly a quick hand with the lawyer letter, and I'm sure you could paper your, your, your office with 